Welcome today. I'm going to rig using Arno's new line of product. So I'm going to install buttons, solenoids, flashers, and more. We're going to configure all that using Arno's new configurator. Buckle up. We got a lot to see. Uh, this card is designed to replace the KL25Z. And the KL25Z is actually harder and harder to get our hands on due to shortage. We saw a major price increase like any other chips out there. Arno came up with a standalone card that will allow you to connect all your buttons and your Duff toys using extra additional cards on ports that are provided on the Dudes cab. This card has an accelerometer built in, also has uh, 32 inputs for buttons, and also you can connect your plunger directly to this as well. This card is powered with a Type-C USB. See what happens, Lebowski? You see what happens? Nobody calls me Lebowski. You got the wrong guy. I'm the dude, man. Now this board has been designed to improve latency. Uh, we can see it is actually very fast, 0.71 milliseconds, which is faster than the KL25. Here are for the button inputs. You can use the terminal connectors uh, using a regular wire, or you can use the provided six pins JST ribbon cable, which is my preferred way. Now the firmware will already be on the board, but here's how you can flash it manually. This board is only powered via Type-C connector, which will give it the five volt. This is to connect the Walter board. It's a six pin ribbon cable. And you can see that the terminal connections for the buttons is easily removable. If you want to connect different toys for force feedback, you will need to connect additional cards. And the first card that you're gonna need in order to do this is the Walter driver. This will add up to 16 power width modulation output to your dudes cab. Arno's new boards have a movie reference. Let's see what it is. Am I the only one around here who gives a shit about the rules? Mark at zero. The data in will allow you to connect a Walter to the dudes cab and the data out will connect to a second Walter driver. And you can see here the dip switch, it's to set the number of Walter you have. So based on the number, uh, you follow this chart to set the dip switch. Now the Walter driver card uh, cannot be used as a standalone. Uh, it's just an extension to the dudes cab to allow for connecting Duff. In order to connect your toys, you will need specific cards. The Must Light is a card that will allow you to connect up to 16 LEDs. It allows you to trigger LEDs, for example, a five LED flash bar. Also, if you want to use a Duff to have your launch button flash and your start button flash, and then your fire button flash or your magna save or whatnot, you can also use this card as a mean of doing this. So these are the different connectors. Uh, you're gonna see on the left, the button, the 12 volt goes here, then the blue, then the green, and the red. So when looking at the configurator, uh, these are the ports. So from one to 16. 
Now the fuse uh, is actually in here. Uh, it's provided with the must light. Uh, the fuses are already in there. Easy to remove if something happens. This little button board is quite handy. This will allow you to connect up to five buttons just on this. So for example, you can maybe have one for the right side of your cab, one for the left side, and then you can connect that to your dude's cab. All right, let's connect these boards. So I'm gonna connect the uh, dude's cab to the Walter driver. And uh, the Walter is data in, and I'm going to connect now the Walter to the must light. Now there are two ways you can connect this, whether you use single cable from port to port, or my preferred way, uh, you use the actual provided four pin ribbon cable that will connect port one to four from let's say the must light to the matching port on the Walter driver. So one to four. And let's just do it for the other ports. You can see it's very easy. You just gotta make sure that the ports are matching on the two boards. That's it, the two boards are now connected. Now I'm gonna connect the two pin wire. This is for the power. So this is on the Walter to the must light. So now they're linked together. And now to power the dudes cab, uh, we're gonna connect the uh, type C cable to the computer. And you will see that when there's power to the board, you're gonna see a light. And that's true for any boards that we are going to connect. For the purpose of this video, I'm using a variable power supply and I'm applying 12 volts to the uh, must light. And because all cards are linked together, uh, the power will transfer from one to the other and you're gonna see a light when the power's on. So for buttons, uh, this is quite simple. Uh, you just connect two cables, and it doesn't matter which one you use for the ground for just for that purpose, you can use either. And I'm going to connect one to the right flipper and one to the ground. Now there are several grounds on the board. There are seven total, you can use any of them. All right, that's the second button, and that's gonna be our left. Uh, I'm gonna set this one for my left flipper. So if you look uh, on the board, uh, you've got the ground at the top, and the left flipper is the uh, third one down. So let's connect this. Right, now I'm gonna use this big button. Uh, it can be anything, uh, it can be a launch, it can be a start. I'm gonna wire it for a start. Uh, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. Um, this one's gonna be back backlit, but we're gonna get back to how we do this a bit later. So ground and start, and that's gonna be this button. Now this is the POTAR, and uh, that's actually to connect your real plunger. It's available on Arno's website and it makes it super easy to connect your plunger. Now this is the potential meter, um, kind of hard to pronounce, and uh, you just remove the two screws and uh, you can actually insert the uh, POTAR in the uh, 3D mounted. And then you will see that on the top when you flip it, there is like two little holes so you can secure it in place. Now, this is not, um, you don't have to put this one in. It's only if you want to have the end button at the end of the plunger. And we're just gonna set it up here just to show you. You insert the button, uh, you put the uh, screw in here, and this is going to mount the uh, plunger rod. And we can actually uh, insert the uh, plunger rod in there. Uh, first of all, we need to do a few steps. Uh, let's remove the cap. And we need to remove that little C-clip. Be careful, it flies off. And that now what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert the rod in the 3D mount, and we're gonna pull back a little bit. And we're gonna insert that little sleeve 
and then we're gonna push down on that potentiometer slider and we're gonna push it down and clip that little c-clamp back in and then we're gonna release and then we've got it now we can slide it in and if you push the button you can see how pushing the plunger will activate that button the side screw is just to secure that mount in place and uh, now we need to connect those two wires on the uh, terminal connector and uh, the potar will take care of the buttons here now we can connect this to the dudes cab uh, this is the provided cable and there's actually a a dedicated spot for the plunger on the dudes cab. This is the 12 RGB LEDs. They're perfect for a flash bar. And this is what we're going to do now. Uh, you can set the back. We got uh, the different connectors. And here's the four uh, ribbon cable that I'm using for my lights. Love that one. Got that from China for cheap. And uh, we're just going to connect the four wires for the matching pins here and screw that in place. Now it's ready. Uh, now it's easy. The other end is going to connect onto the MUS light. Now we can see it's LED 1 and uh, we're going to connect the four wires and push it in. And we're going to uh, pop the fuse just to make sure it's okay. Uh, like I said, the MUS light has the, the uh, fuse provided on the board. This is all our five lights and we're going to install them one at a time. This is the 12 volt flasher. Love that little thing. It's easy to install. Uh, you just connect two wires and then you connect to the MOS board on port 16. You'll see it's marked strobe and it gives 12 volt and ground already. So uh, again, turning on the uh, power supply and I'm going to test the solenoid. Test your polarity. Okay, now I'm going to apply the negative 12 volt and the 12 volt positive onto a, a terminal block and always put a diode uh, the a bar pointing towards the v plus and we're going to connect it to on the mus 8 for this now i need a second driver board because we used up all the 16 ports so the data in of the second walter will go to the data out of the first one the mus 8 is a board that allows you to connect powerful toys. Just remember it that way. Something with punch, like a solenoid, a knocker, a shaker motor, a chime. So anything of, of, of that nature will connect here. So this board does not come with fuses because there's the difference between all sorts of devices. So, so you will have to provide your own fuses. You can connect eight toys on this, up to 20 amps per toy. These ports can also be used for LED. For example, in this video, I'm wiring the start button to flash when the table is ready. And we're gonna connect, that's the 12 volt uh, ribbon cable, and then we're gonna connect it to the Walter driver. That's a second card. You can also just run 12 volt directly to it if you wish. I'm gonna flick the first ID to on because that's our second card. Now I'm gonna apply 12 volt power to the MUS 8. And I'm connecting it to the uh, terminal block here. Very handy. Now this is the port one to four on the MUS 8. Uh, we need to connect it to the uh, second Walter driver, port one to four. And because I only got two or three toys I'm gonna connect on this, all I need really is the first four ports. I'm not gonna connect the other ribbons. Now I'm going to power the button here so you can see uh, one is going on the 12 volt power and the, the negative of the button will go on the MUS 8 on one of the port. I'm going to pop in the fuse, uh, like a 1M fuse, it's, a, it's just an LED. And now we need to download the uh, software, the configurator uh, by Arno. Good job on the software by the Wave Roomch. If you go on the uh, dudes cab page and you see in the description 
the uh, link for the configurator is there. So once you install that, you will be presented with a screen like this, and then you won't see much of the option unless you connect your device. And then once it's connected, it will show you all the options. This is the general function for the shift mode, will give you extra functionality for your buttons. Night mode, uh, if the toys you want to turn off when it's noisy. And the keyboard layout, depending on the part of the world where you are. This is the input for the buttons. So any buttons that we've connected earlier, uh, if I press on it, you're gonna see it's gonna flash and tell me which button is that. So now all the only thing you need to do is to configure those buttons in your favorite software, in this case, VPX. So I'm gonna see, uh, you see that flipper now is port nine, and I'm gonna send it that way. And so you do each button that way. Now this is the uh, card orientation. So the way the USB is pointing is what you're gonna choose here. And this is the accelerometer that's built in. So I'm shaking the dude's cab right now and it's moving. And uh, you can see on the right side, the slider bars, that's where you're gonna adjust depending on your favorite settings. Now this is the uh, plunger. Uh, you click the calibrate button and then you pull all the way, you release and then you push on it and when it will give it its full range. So now in the table, you can see that if I pull the plunger right here, it will pull the plunger in the game. And it's pretty accurate if you look. If Here we have in the drop down the function of uh, the button at the end of the plunger that I've shown. So you can pick which button you want it to be. All right, now we're going to output cards and then we're gonna create a new card. So this one's gonna be the must light that we have, 16 ports. So I'm gonna name it must light. And uh, below uh, you see ID number, it's one, that's the first card. And then you need to check mark each port that you want to uh, enable for this card. So in this case, we have 16. So each uh, port has an output preset that you can set from a couple of options. In this case, it's a LED. So we're going to set LEDs and you can see next to each port, you have a sliding bar and a button uh, on off. You can turn on. In this case, you can see the button light uh, fluctuating because we had PWM on this, pulse width modulation, which allows dimming. Okay, now we can create a second card for the MUS8. And I'm just going to name it MUS8. Now you can see ID is two, so it's a second card, and the first duff is 17. That'll be important later. Um, now we check mark the two ports because we only have two, so I'm gonna enable two. And in the output preset, I'm gonna set it to uh, contactor. Uh, could you also use flipper logic? It's pretty cool for flippers, but it's just for a demo here. And uh, here for the second one, it's gonna be a LED. Important to send the config and save to memory. And that's the button. And you can see why having PWM really makes a difference. All right, now uh, you need to install Duff. Uh, on my website, majorfranchi.com in the software, I've got the tutorial and the link to go get on the MJR's website. Download the Windows MSI to install. It will install all the, the directory. All the steps easily uh, explained. Next, we're gonna go to the online config tool and uh, we're going to add a dude's cab in my account. And uh, you're gonna set it one, you're gonna save it, and we're gonna go to the uh, port assignments portion of the website. In here, you need to fill the different ports. Now we have a must light with 16 LEDs. So RGB is three colors. These are the different options we're gonna pick. It's for a flasher. So you have left, outer left, center, right, and out center. Each one taking three ports. That takes us to uh, the strobe, which is 16, and 1718, it's our second board. 
And uh, we're going to pick on port 17. It's my uh, solenoid, so I'm going to pick flipper left. And just a little error, you'll see that port 18, I'm setting uh, a launch button. Uh, it should be start, but I mean, I, had, I did the filming prior to it, so... Hit the save config and generate config. It will download a file on your computer and you're going to copy that in the created folder by uh, Duff and it's on the uh, direct output config and then you're gonna extract in there and if there are files that exist, you can overwrite them and you should be good to go. So I've got the table loaded uh, with Duff working and uh, let's test the toys. Now this is my launch button, which should be really start. <laughs> and um, here's the little left flipper. It's a weak solenoid, but it, it works for the purpose. And you can see on the card when I'm hitting it, it shows that the uh, port is getting triggered. I love the uh, LED bar. That adds so much. This was Arno's new boards with the guide on how to install. The guides are available on his website. You can read in details. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Until next time.